okay, so now we're going to do the mixed review, which isn't, so nothing new. And I'm going to do it page by page. So I'll do first page, second page, third page. And this is just practicing recognizing the problem. Because the hardest part, chapter two, plugging into your calculator and solving isn't that difficult. The hard part is recognizing which case is it. Right? Is it the simple interest case? Is it the, the compound interest case? The accumulation sinking fund case? The loan case? Am I looking for future value, present value, time, interest? Right? What am I looking for? And that's the hard part on these problems. So you have to recognize all of those parts and pieces. And so this is just a practice of that because that's how the test is going to be and that's the hard time students have. So this is, again, not new, but it, it is kind of testing your skill and preparing you for being able to pick out those important aspects. All right, so I'm going to do it page by page. So page one of the mixed notes over chapter two. All right, so the first example here, Roland deposits... $2,000 into an account paying an interest rate of 4.5% compounded quarterly. How much is in the account at the end of five years? And how much interest did it earn? Okay, so the important parts that you have to pick out, which you need to write down on a sheet of paper, is that's a one-time deposit, right? So that means that's a present value. Compounding quarterly, which means it's compounding case, so I can use the TVM solver. It's not a simple interest. Quarterly means four times a, a year. How much money is at the end of five years? That would be looking for future value and interest. So I want to find future value, and I want so future value is one of the questions, and interest is one of the, and again interest I have to figure out. There isn't a way to do that on the calculator. All right, I have to sort of figure out interest. All right, so that's step one making sure you recognize what you have and what you're being asked to find. And so this is a TVM solver case because it's compounding interest. There's only one deposit, all right, no, no payments, zero payments. And so then you go to plug it in. So N is our compounding period times time, so four times for five years, so 20 times our money's compounded. Our interest rate is 4.5, and you plug it in there as the percent. Present value which is your deposit, and so it's a negative 2,000, right, because you're taking 2,000 out of your pocket and depositing it into this account for five years. You can't touch it for five years. There are no payments, so that needs to be zero, and it's important that you remember that that's zero. And then what we want to solve for is the future value, and then our pay period and our compounding period are the same. They're both four. And so that's what you have to carefully plug into the calculator. And so the first question is, well, what's the future value? Well, that's what the calculator is going to give you. All right, the future value is $2,501.50. And usually we'll ask you to round these to either the penny, because that's where money usually is rounded. All right, so the penny or the whole number. All right, and so this one I rounded to the penny. My rule of thumb is to round to the penny. All right, interest which again, this is the one where you have to figure out the interest. So interest in this case is my future value minus my present, right? I deposited a certain amount and in the future I have a certain amount. And so the difference would be the extra, the interest. So I take my 2,501.5 minus my $2,000 deposited. And so that means over the five year period, they earned $500 in interest, 501.5 in interest total. All right, next example on this page. Alex buys the used car. All right, so he's borrowing $10,000 from a credit union at 8.4% interest compounded monthly. If he pays off his loans with equal monthly payments over the next three years, what's the amount of his monthly payment and how much did he pay for his car total? So again, there's two parts to this. What does he have to pay off? What is his monthly payments in order to pay off his loan? And then how much total did he buy for his, did he spend for his car, right? He borrowed 10000 but it's 10000 with interest. And so we want to figure out, well, what's the total amount that he ended up paying, not just the 10000 Okay, so this is a loan case. So I have a monthly payment. That's the PMT I'm looking for. And then I want to figure out total payments, right? which I have to figure that out. It's not a part of the, the TVM solver. TVMP is the payments, TMP, TMP, 
PMT is what I'm looking for. And then after that, I'll figure out how much that he actually spent. All right. N is our compounding period times time. So 12 times 3. So 36 times. So he's paying off his car pretty fast. All right. He's taking only a three-year loan out. All right. Interest rate was pretty high, so he must not have very good credit. Present value, well, that's the amount he borrowed. Remember, debt is negative, so negative 10000 that goes in there. Payments are what we're looking for, right? We're paying off debt, so that's a positive amount, right? I'm making my debt smaller. Remember, with loans, we're going to pay off our loan, and what you have to remember with the loan case is that the future value is zero, and you have to remember to put the zero in there for the future value. Our pay period, compounding period is 12 in this case. All right, so what are our payments? That's the first part of the problem. So our payments, monthly payments for the loan comes out to be $315.21 are what he has to, every month he has to pay the bank back. And it's a fairly high amount because he's paying it off in three years, right? So again, he's going to pay it off very quick. So that's the first part of the question. That's the monthly payment part. Now the second part of the question is what are his total payments. Right, how much, it should be a little bit bigger than 10000 right? He borrowed 10000 and so we want to figure out the 10000 plus the interest. Well, that would be the number of payments times the payment amount. So 36 times, he's going to pay $315.21, and so the total amount that he ended up paying for his car, which again should be bigger than 10000 that's kind of your mental check that you, you'd set it up right, is $11,347.56. And so that's the total amount he ended up paying. He borrowed 10000 So that means, actually, his interest isn't too bad. It's $1,347.56, All right, even though he has a high interest rate. And that's because he's paying it off fairly quickly. All right, the next example on this page. Greg borrows $3,000 from his sister. He is agreeing to pay, so he's borrowing. He agrees to pay her 12% annual simple interest, and it's been a little while since we've done simple interest. He plans to pay it off in 18 months. All right, what does he owe? So in 18 months, he's going to pay her off. So we want to know, well, what does he owe her completely? So what's the future value on his loan? Okay, so this is, again, a simple interest case. It says it. As soon as it says simple interest, you cannot use the TVM solver. TVM solver is only for compounding interest. All right, so remember, those those simple. So it's been a little while since we've done this. This is 2.1. So as soon as it says simple interest, you have to go and use one of those simple interest. So simple interest is the formula case. You can't plug it into the calculator other than once you're typing it out for the formula. And so remember, there are two simple interest formula. There was the INT, which was our present value times R times T. There was the future value, which was our present value times 1 plus R times T. And this is the one we actually have to use. I don't know what the interest is. They didn't tell me. Then there's no way to figure it out. And so I have to use the future value. And that's actually what we solve for. We want to figure out, well, how much will he owe his sister Cindy back in 18 months? Then the second thing is, remember, time is always in years. So when I have months, I always have to convert that to years. Well, I take my 18 divided by my 12 to get my years. And you can actually type it in exactly 18 over 12 if you want to. Or you can simplify it. Does simplify. That's one and a half years. Uh, so 1.5 years. It's up to you, however you want to type it in, but you do have to change it to years. Right, now you plug in all your information. All right, so our future value is what we're looking for. How much does he owe? He borrowed 3000 so that's his present value. 1 plus our interest rate, which, again, you write in as a decimal, 0 0.12, times his years, one and a half years. 18 months is one and a half years. And then you simplify. Now, the only set of parentheses you have to have are the big set. Uh, but you do need to have the big set first unless you're doing this piece by piece. And then just make sure you're careful when you plug it out in the calculator that you follow correct order of operations. All right, so he has to pay her back $3,500.40. So his interest, didn't ask for interest, uh, but I'm going to give it, was 540 And again, it's the reason why it's so much is because that's a pretty big interest rate. All right, Cindy's making a killing on this one. 
So again, simple interest, you have to use the simple interest formula. The TVM solvers for compounding problems only, which are our compound cases, our sinking fund, which has to do with a compound interest, and our uh, annuity loan cases, which has to do with compound interest. All right, the last problem on this page. Right. Heather deposits $5,000 into an account that earns 6.5% interest compounded quarterly. So again, as soon as I see compounded quarterly, I can use my TVM solver. She then adds $300 at the end of each quarter. How much interest did she earn? All right, so this is one of those complex problems. There are two money amounts. So if I were solving this with formulas, I don't have to because it's compounding. I can plug it into the TVM solver. But there are two dollar amounts. There's the original deposit of 5,000 at time zero. And then there's the additional regular deposits at the end of each quarter right, of $300. So there's payments, right? Every quarter she's got to put a payment in the account of 300. And then there's an original present value. So there's $2 amount and then I have to figure out the interest which we'll do that at the end. Before I get to the interest though, I have to figure out, well, what is her future value? How much money did she accumulate with interest and the money she puts in there? So I have to figure out her accumulation. And there's two parts to this. There's the accumulation from the regular payments of $300. That would be the sinking fund case. And then there's the accumulation of the $5,000 that earns the interest over the, the time period. I forgot to put a time period in here. All right, so I'm going to add a time period now. Or we'll say that the, the time is eight years. We'll do eight years. All right, so I'm going to remember to put that in there. I'll try to remember to post that with eight years. All right, so time is eight years. How much energy does she earn in eight years? All right, so for eight years, the money's sitting in there. For eight years, she puts $300 at the end of each quarter. How much does she earn? Or not eight years, I think I put five years. All right, so we want to figure out how much she earns in five years. So for five years, the money's sitting there, and for five years, she's putting $300 at the end of each quarter. All right, so T is five. All right, plug it in and find my future value first. And remember, there are two dollar amounts, and I've got to remember to put those in there. So N is our compounding period times time. We're compounded quarterly, so five times our time, which I had to give you, five years. So 20 is our N. Interest rate was 6.5, so 6.5 when you plug it in. All right, so this time there's not going to be a zero. I have a present value. I have a regular payment and I'm looking for the future value. And it's very important that you remember the negatives in this case. Present value is a negative because she's taking $5,000 out of her pocket and depositing in the account. I mean, she can't spend the $5,000 for the five years. It's got to sit in there in her interest. And so this is a negative 5,000, right? Because it's the deposit into the account. She can't spend it until the end of five years. Same thing with the $300 payments, right? She's taking $300 out of her account and every quarter, every three months, she's taking the $300 and putting it into this savings account. She cannot spend the $300 for five years. It's going to be saved and then at the end of the five years she can take it out. And so then you've got to remember that goes in there as a negative $300. It's out of pocket money. And it's important if you forget one of those negatives, you'll get the wrong answer. We're going to solve for the future value, which will come out positive in this case. All right, payments and compounding period are the same. Quarterly, right, four. She's quarterly payments, quarterly compounding. And so now we solve for how much is her future value when she's all said and done after five years. So at the end of five years, she's going to accumulate thirteen thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars and about twenty three cents in change that's the the amount she has in the account at the end of the now she can it's positive because now she can take that thirteen thousand out and spend it on whatever she wants we want to figure out how much of that thirteen thousand nine hundred and twenty five is extra how much was interest she put in so much it earned interest over the five year period we want to figure out how much and so that one we have to figure it out all right, so we have the accumulated amount, the future value. And then we have to subtract all her payments. 
all of them. All right, so it's going to be the future value minus the one-time deposit of 5000 so the present value, minus all her payments of 300 And so, so remember, she's paying out n times her payments. So 20 times, she's going to invest $300 into this account. And so there's the formula for it, and you just plug in the numbers. So $13,925.23. She put in $5,000 once. And then 20 times, she put in $300. So those were all her payments. That's why we're subtracting them. We're subtracting all of her payments. What's left over once I do that subtraction is the interest. All right, and so once you subtract all that, $2,925.23 in total interest. So out of the 13,000, th almost 3,000 of it is interest. The rest of it was just money that she put in there. She invested it, right? The initial 5,000, and then this would be uh, 6,000, right? So it'd be 5,000 plus the 6,000 that she put in there would be the amount of money she put in there, and the rest of it came from interest. All right, so finish up. So I've got to remember to go back in there and put the five-year time in there. All right, so there's page one of the mixed review, which we had a little bit of sampling of a lot of different things. Uh, we had a two-set two case, a simple interest case, and a regular compounding case. All right, and then the next video, I'll do page two of the notes.